How you doing? Randy, Randy, good to see you. Hey, All boss. right, boss, how's it going? Uh, you know, it's another day in paradise. <laughs> what, what are you guys into today? Well, Randy, we got a power stroke that we tore into and uh, we got some problems. So it's basically a glitter bomb. The whole oval filter is full of metal. I mean, it's, uh, it's a disaster. So this thing's definitely coming apart. And I know from the past experience, there's a lot of difference between factory and what we are able to do, especially on balancing. Well, it sounds like you got an engine that's not happy. Fair enough? Fair enough. All right, first of all, you gotta understand balancing is not a direct means of increasing horsepower. In fact, balancing unleashes power. Well, what I mean by that is when it's unbalanced, it's causing a parasitic event. Well, as you balance it, that parasitic event is gone. Now, in doing so, you've netted more power. The key to balancing, bottom line, is durability and stability. You gotta remember, this crank's going round and round, piston's going up and down, but the whole valve train, everything else is linked. So that's sort of like taking a brick and throwing it inside of a washing machine and turn the thing and stand back. Well, it's the same effect because this unbalanced force is like a, a, like a newborn baby with a little hammer locked in a room. It'll destroy anything and everything. I would know about that. I'd that's right, it's a new job. But where I'm going with that is, if we don't get this unit balanced, then it's gonna generate hostile forces. Let me give you an example. Please. The factory had it balanced and it had 147 pounds of force hitting that crank 50 times per second. Now, I'm gonna make an hour drive. Do the math on your calculator, you'll smoke the calculator. <laughs> but if I, your guy in the shop balanced this assembly, he did a great job, by the way. He had balanced it down to the same RPM, down to three pounds. Oh, wow. Now look, if you guess, that's a bad attitude. Right. What you do is you measure, you get perfect numbers, you build the bob weight to that matched assembly number, then you rebalance. What the factory did, God bless them. What you're gonna do, different animal. We have to understand the application that's gonna go back has to be totally balanced. Anything short of that, that engine's coming back to you shorter than you think. It won't stay out there. All right, balance it and make it happy. Make it happy. Happy life, happy customer. So we'll get started. Cool. Thanks for the help. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks, Randy. Thanks, Chuck. If you had a four blade fan in your ceiling and you took one of the blades off and you turned it on high, it wouldn't take very long for that fan to come down, right? So you might think of the crankshaft the same way. The housing bore is centering that crankshaft in its rotation. If we add forces that are vectoring outside of its axis, then what happens is these forces are beating the bearings out of the engine and it shortens the life. So that's one major thing. We can definitely increase the longevity of the engine by balancing. The other thing is, is the parasitic event that takes place. Now, what that is, is basically if we're taking a vector or a force or inertia, um, or instead of saying that, let's say kinetic energy, right? The way that we use kinetic energy is that's the energy that we have stored in the bank. How we spend that energy is gonna be how efficient the engine's actually gonna run. So every time the combustion event takes place, that's energy in the bank, so to speak. If we spend it elsewhere, instead of over the crankshaft, in the vector and the force that it should be acted upon, then we're actually causing a parasitic loss. So now we're not efficient in the way we're spending anymore, we're actually losing. So the stability and the durability of the entire drops train are greatly improved through balancing of the rotational assembly. Now, how that actually works is we take the balancer, we take the pistons, the rings, the bearings, and all of the rotational components, and then we simulate them through things that we call bob weights. Something that we can simulate by bolting it to the crankshaft and spinning the crankshaft and then measuring the amount of force that's acting on the crankshaft in other directions that we don't want. So we take these things, we bolt them to the crankshaft, we spin them up, and we balance it to a tolerance that's specified by basically an ISO standard or greater. 